Hello. Okay, so welcome to Middle Lab number two. Please pay no attention to this. I use these for the classes. In this class, it's uh, Middle Lab number three. It will be. It is downloaded uh, on the uh, in the module that I will learn under Middle Lab number two. So, without any more wasted time here, uh, let's first go over some of the basics. Remember, every program starts with a percentage sign. You need to hit your caps lock button if you haven't already done so. Very good, I just did it. Next one is this is what this is the program name. Now, uh, always starts with a capital O. That's the only time you'll use a capital O. The rest of the time, everything will be zeros. There will be no other capital O's. All right. Now, uh, this part right here is called a rim statement or comment statement. Remember, anything inside the parentheses the computer doesn't work, use. I would like you from now on to put your name on your program like this. You just put it right here. Just type in your name right there. Make sure it's in close in the parentheses. And we're in good shape. I'm going to hit Control S. I haven't really made any changes. So I don't have to do that. Remember, Control S. We'll go through the whole file saving thing here in a minute. I'll make a change in a little bit. Um, this is called a sequence number. I'm not going to accept any uh, any uh, programs that don't have a sequence number. And remember, make them like 5, 10, 15, 20, or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 100, whatever you want. But give yourself some room in there because remember, sometimes you have to add a line. So that's important to do that. Or you have to resequence everything. And again, there is software on the web that you can get editing software that will actually sequence numbers and do a lot more for you. Uh, I'm not, I may find some that I like, some that's pretty gimpy, some that you have to pay for. All right, so let's go to that safety line. Uh, we've got this loaded up in the Jack Marshall method. First off, G00, we're putting the machine in rapid. That means every move we're going to make until we tell it differently is going to be made as fast as the machine can go. Now, those are positional moves. We never cut with a G00, never. G17 means we're going to do the arcs in the XY plane up over here. This is X, this is Y, and there's an arc, an arc, an arc, an arc. So this is four arcs, and they're both being done in the XY plane. That's very important. You need to tell it that. Next one in the safety line is G20. We're saying inches, million inches. If I put a G21 up there, I'd say we're going to do it metric. Okay, G80. We're canceling any can cycles. If we don't do that, a can cycle is still active. The next time we hit cycle start for any given reason, that can the, the control is going to try to execute that can cycle. Let's say it was a drill cycle, and uh, let's say you're over top of the vise about two inches. You just moved it and hit cycle start. That thing's going to think you're in a drill cycle. It's going to try to drill a hole right there. Probably using the wrong offset. Bottom line is you can crash very, very, very badly. Always put that in there. G90, that means absolute coordinates. Everything is coming from X0, Y0, which is the lower left-hand corner of this part. See the coordinates uh, video for more discussion on that. Okay, and again, I have gone ahead and put down safety line. Now, I'm going to do something else with comment lines later on. We'll talk more about that. Uh, line N10, we've got a G54. That's going to activate the uh, tool length offsets. Basically, every CNC machine has what they call a machine home, and that's the machine zero Machine X0, Y0, and Z0. And normally it's a tool change position on milling machines. Z will go pretty much all the way up. And X and Y usually go all the way to the left. And Y goes all the way up. So bottom line is, what when, we have, when this happens here, when the G54 is being read, when you pick up this corner with an edge finder or something like that, and you tell it that this is X0, Y0, Values are loaded into a table, into a G54 table, and the machine goes and gets those and say, okay, move your work coordinate. They'll also, some people call this a work coordinate shift. Bottom line is it makes this X0, Y0. Okay? Now, normally we don't Z0 on the top of part. You're going, what? You just told me Z0 is the top of part. That is the top of the part. Yes, that's the top. Uh, take a print reading class if you don't know it. Okay? You're going to get some in here, but not enough. Bottom line is, we don't have to ever activate a G54 with Z0. We just use tool length offsets. We'll talk more about those later. Next line, N15. We're going to do a tool change. T01, M06. So we're going to go get tool 01. Uh, all right. And in this case, it is a one inch end mill. You can actually put down the number of flutes. Let me go up here and see how many flutes I told you that was. Four flute, one inch dimer, four flute. No, no. Okay, I'm not giving you any, uh, oh, feed, yes, I'm getting a feed per tooth right down here. Four thousandths feed per tooth converted to inches per minute. The problem is I'm not telling you, because I'm stupid, <laughs> how many teeth are on this. Well, if it's a four flute, I actually am. 
Fourth loop means there are four teeth. So if you want to go over here, this is something that isn't a bad thing. Four FL. That's all I have to put on there. Now I'm going to hit that control S. Let's do the whole thing again. Let's say we just started. File, save as, go to wherever you can do it. In this case, I'm going, I'll just do the whole nine yards. Go find my NTTC208 folder or whatever folder you want. I really don't care. Mine's in fall 2020. Here it is. Okay. And also, I've made a, lab, a folder inside there called Mill Lab Number Two, and so I'm putting it in there. See, I've already got it. But this is the one we're going to do. So I hit save. And it says you want to place it. Yes, I do. Now, from now on, all you have to do is hit the shortcut Control S. Very, very, very good control. It's a good, good little thing. There. You need to use that. Get used to using the shortcuts. So we've done our tool change, which is going to be our tool number and MO6. Now, again, the machine really doesn't carry, care whether you put an MO6 here or 201. There are some older versions of machines that will get a little bit anal about that, but most of the new ones don't care. They just, they just read it in, in whatever order they need to read it. But for this class, I would prefer that you do it this way because, remember, I have to read these programs to see if there's something wrong with them. <laughs> and uh, if you move things around, it makes it very hard. All right. So next line. Well, we've got our... Let's go back. We've got our safety line activated. We've got our tool changed. Time to turn the spindle on, MO3, spindle on clockwise. And we're going to go at 458. Now, that seems a little weird. That's the speed. Remember, never a decimal point. But let's calculate that RPM. She did some of that earlier. So real quick, uh, it's going to be cutting speed. Looks like cutting speed in this case is 120. Let me see if I can find that. You usually have to read these whole things, OK? Uh, yeah, I know I okay, I know I said that in there. I know the outside. Yep, there he is. He's a cutting speed of 120 surface feet per minute. So one, two, zero times the constant three point eight two equals four hundred fifty eight. Oh guess what? We divide that by one. Ha ha, four hundred fifty eight. Yep, round it. So you don't ever put a decimal point in that S word. Never. If you do that right there, what I'm doing right here, if you do that, if you do that, if you do that, the control error out. And that's another one of those things that will take, like, freaking forever for us to find. Okay, next line, line 25, G43. This activates our tool length offset. Basically, that's a way that the machine takes all the tools, because they're never going to all be the same length, and mathematically makes them the same length. You will measure them later on. Hopefully, we get to come in, and I'll show you that. Uh, you get to measure the tools on the machine, the length of them, and you set a, that value into a tool length offset. In this case, it will be tool length offset H01. The H number and the T number always have to be the same number. You will get an error if they're not. So notice I have a Z move in here, and it's moving at rapid because this is modal. Modal means it's going to stay that way until we change it. It's in the rapid mode until I change it to the feed mode down here later on. So Z is going to wrap it down to one inch above the part, activate tool length off at zero one, which, you know, you know, you, like I said, this number and this number always have to match on Haas machines. There may be others that they don't. All controls are a little bit different, just like cars. Okay, line 30, what am I doing here on line 30? Well, what I'm doing is I'm moving to X zero, Y zero, and a hundred thousandths above the part. Okay, let's bring that part back up here. Come on, part. There you go. Uh, we're hundred thousandths above the part. That's a, what we call the R plane. Uh, you never want to wrap it into the parts. You never want to try to cut with rapid. So we're stopping hundred thousandths. There'll be some shops might change this to a very small amount. Uh, if you did five thousand parts, a hundred thousandths could save you, could cost you a lot of money. Or you might wrap it within ten thousandths, which would save you a little bit of money because it saves you some time. Uh, but Seriously, give your operators a break. If something's going wrong and they don't have enough time. Also, this is a good way to check their setups. We'll talk about that later on. The MO8 is simply that's going to turn coolant on. Okay, don't turn the coolant on up here. You could. You could. You could put the MO8 there. You do, and you're not in an enclosed situation where you're totally enclosed. You're going to get splashed with coolant. And coolant is, very, is one of the... Metalworking fluids, one of the most hazardous things we have out there if used improperly. Uh, make you very sick. They're subject to very bad bacterial or, or, or viral contaminations. Uh, that's that. Okay, so 
Again, we're not using cutter comp on this one. It does say use cutter comp. Please do not use cutter comp. We're not ready for that. Uh, it'll probably be a couple more laps before we get ready to do that. So now I'm taking Z down 120 thousandths. Now you're going, why 120 thousandths? The part's 250 thousandths. Okay? So why not all the way once? Well, I could take it down all the way once, but I want to take two passes. I really don't want to take that whole, or not 250,000, excuse me, 500,000. I don't want to take that all on one pass. Now, something I'm telling you right now, all of this from that point on right here, all of this is just copied. I copied this from the other lab. You should do the same thing. This is the way every single program in this class is going to start up. So copy that. You know, paste it right in there. All right, so let's go back. So now I know why this I have Z120. Let's say we are going to take this all in one cut. I think we will. We'll take Z all in one cut. So we're going to change that to Z minus 0.5. Oh, not two decimal points. That'll get you an error. And I'm going to use two places. Now, feed. This feed's not correct. So let's calculate up the feed. Uh, I put up a feed calculations video. It's pretty simple. What you do, let's just do it, okay? Feed calculations. Four. First, we have four teeth, four flutes. That's right. Now, if you look right around here, I told you to use a feed per tooth. Uh, it's right here, four thousandths. So, what that means is every time the tool goes around once, okay, each tooth is going to take a four thousandths deep cut. Okay, not deep, but just a thickness of a cut. Okay, so, and we can get these from tables, various manufacturers. It's also can. Uh, contention on setup. There's just a lot of things that goes with feed per tooth. I will give you that value later on. I'll let you look it up yourself. So, to do this, we're going to take the number of teeth, okay, and this is in the video. Take the number of teeth, which is four, times the feed per tooth. Going to be equal 16,000, isn't it? Boy, it better. Okay. Then all we have to do is multiply that, because we want to convert this to inches per minute, because that's how most milling machines or CNC milling machines can or express their feet in inches per minute. So multiply that times the RPM, which is 458, and there's my feet, 7.328. Now, here's a cool thing I want to show you. All right, that's it. You can go here. Uh, I'm going to copy that. Copy. Boom. I'm going to just close that sucker out. The replace button. The replace is an incredibly powerful function. Replace what? Well, let's say F 2.5, because that's not the right feed. Oh, caps lock caught me again. And I'm going to replace it with F, and I'm going to paste. Now, do I need it all the way out that far? By the way, it doesn't hurt to have a space in between there. It makes it easier for us to read. You could round this to two places real easy. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay? Then I hit replace all. Watch what happens. Okay, and watch what happens. <laughs> of course, nothing's happening. <sighs> what, are you locked up? No. no. Normally, this works perfectly. F2.5. Let's see if I don't have a space. Maybe I don't have a space there. She looks, yeah, I don't think I do. Let's try it now. Ah, I did not have a space between there. Remember, this is going to look for exactly what you put down. Good example, so that you can avoid that mistake in the future. And now everything's done. Boom, see? All my feeds have been converted. Isn't that cool? Control S. Yep, that is cool. So, we're feeding down at 7.33 inches per minute. Now, let's see. Let's go back to Mr. Park here. Or Mrs. Park, I don't care. Uh, what's the next thing I want to do? Well, I'm setting at X0, Y0. And remember, we're not making a real part. We're actually, we're just learning how to do the formatting. This would actually make the part smaller per side by the, the diameter. So it would be 3 inches by uh, 1 inch 250,000. Oh, excuse me. It would be 3 inches by 1 inch 500,000. So we're down with it, which would be way too small. Cut or comp will take care of that. We'll talk about it later. So now when I look at this, I'm going, okay, all of these points are wrong at this point. But see, this is the thing. Don't reinvent the wheel. I'm teaching you how to do this. All right, we want to go to point one. Well, that's all. we're already at point one. So what we want to do is we're going to mill up to point two. Point one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. One more time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 14 points plotted. I have those. I'll get those back up later and just cover up this, okay? In fact, I'm going to have to kind of toggle back between them because I can't put three screens up on this at the same time. I'm sorry, but I can't. Uh, not well, I can't. It'll just get too crowded. All right, so I want to move the y-axis up. So this is going to be y 2.5. So I'm just going to go 2.5. Now, I'm going to keep going to three places. You do not have to. You can program it like that. The machine does not care. Those are insignificant digits as far as a CNC control is concerned. Control S. Okay, now something else about the feed. Notice I put the feed in again. You don't have to do that either. Uh, I can just do that. And as long as I left it alone, that feed is mobile. But because we're learning, all right, I'm going to leave it up there. I will see how to leave it up there correctly. There we go. I can do it. It's early in the morning. There we go. Here, control S. There we go. So we're going to go with it. Y goes to 2.5 at 7.33 inches per minute. The spindle's running 458 uh, revolutions per minute, and we're taking a 500,000 steep cut. We, remember, this is not realistic. We're just learning how to do it. We will get to where we actually make real parts. Okay, so now we're going to go to point 1, point 2, point 3. So point 3, let's see here. Well, we want to go right here. Now, I'm going to show you something, which is another cool thing that will help you out. That shows you that you moved to point one. Control S. This keeps you straight. So this is going to be point two. Yeah. Now, go back one. A lot of my students like that. I think it's a pretty good idea. Uh, I can't remember who came up. Well, I came up with it myself. So we don't want to go to X2. We want to get X4. So I'm just going to change this to X4. I am going to carry it out to three places. Again, just to keep things straight. That is point two. Delete. There we go. Control S. Remember, we hit that Control S button frequently. You don't want to get way down here in these uh, these programs and have your computer freeze and it not be saved. Uh, remember, I used to punch paper tape. That's how we did it. Paper tape. One mistake. Started all over. 500 lines into the program. Hit the wrong letter. I mean, you weren't allowed any mistakes. So you guys have got a whole lot easier. All right. Again, the GO1s, by the way, they're modal too. I wouldn't really have to program them in there. But I'm doing it later on. We'll optimize our program. This is just giving you more practice. So that's point two. So this is going to be point three here. Now let's take a look at point three. I'm going to put three here. Uh, so again, geo one. Here is, let me see, uh, two. This is one, two, three. So this is actually, I screwed this up. Let's take that back. That was point two. Yeah, you recognize that a little bit. Point three. So this is actually point four is where we're going to now. Okay, because point one is right here. Yeah. <sighs> I can't drink caffeine anymore, so. Ugh. All right, one, two, three, four. Very good. Point four is not correct. Okay. Point four. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Point four. We're just going to move the y-axis. So here's point four. We don't need that X in there. See, I don't reinvent the wheel. I just edit old programs. Everybody does that. Everybody does that. Uh, rarely will you start with those. Just start with a template and then change it. But see, I don't have to redo my sequence numbers or anything like that. Okay. Now, where am I moving X2 or Y2? I'm moving Y to zero. That's right, zero. Because that's where we started. We're going back to zero. I did say three places, didn't I? Yes, I did. Control S. All right. So here we go. This is, again, we're going to go to point. This is not going to need this. So this is going to be point number five. All right. And I'm going to tab these over and see how far it tabs them over. Make them look. Well, do the tab. Tab. There we go. Control S. Nice and neat. All right. So this is point five. I am going to go to this one. One, two, three, four. This is point five. So this is where it's nice to have your coordinate sheet because I'd have to calculate all that back up. So 
Let's go find my coordinate sheet. I know I'm going to move at least the x. There's no doubt about that. I'm not going to move y because y is already at 0, so I can get rid of that right now. Delete. All right? So let me go get that. I'm going to minimize this and go into my fall 2020 folder, go into MTC 208, go into middle lab number 2. There's my coordinates. Bring them up. Minimize them. Kick them all the way over here to the corner. All right. So there are my points. Now, I, I could toggle back between that and that. All right. So I got my points. So let's go back to my points here, which is this right here. All right. And we're looking at point number five. See, point number five is already given to us. So point number five here, x, we've already calculated that up. x is 0.1875. That's 3 sixteenths, okay? And y is 0. All right, y is 0, but you know what? Again, just to keep you straight, I'll do that. Do I have to do that? Absolutely not. All right? You don't have to, but we'll do it. I got my feed. It did screw up my point variation thing right there. Uh, so that's fine, 0.5. Except, uh, you know what? If it's already at Y0, you don't have to move it to Y0, but I'm going to leave it there. That means now I'm going to tab these all over again. Hit Control S. There we go. So these are your point, point 0.5. There we go. And remember that that feed is also modal. We do not have to put it in there later on. We will not. Uh, remember, the more you put in here, the more you can, the more chance you have putting in the wrong stuff. All right. So let's go to point six here. I'll go ahead, six, and we'll tab him over. Uh, tab, tab, oops, go back one. There we go. Go back over here. So let's see, where does point six? Point six is x is 1.75, so I'm going to do this. So 0.1875. I said 1.875. It's point one. It's 0.1875. And y, I'm looking over here, is 1.375. Remember, we already did this. So this is why it's best to use these coordinate sheets. They can save you a whole lot of time and energy. Let me see if I delete one. Control S. All right. So we're ready for point number seven. All right. Let's take a look. We'll put it in here. Seven. Tab him over. All right. Control S just for the heck of it. Now I got a G00. No way. I am not doing any rapid moves right now, okay? So we're going to go to point 7. So if we look up here at 7, so I'm going to go to G01. Point 7 is going to be X1 inch. So point 7 is an interesting point. Oh, wait a minute. We haven't put down point 6 yet. Yeah, we did. We did point 6, but the Y0. What about Y0.6? That should be Y1.375. Yeah, see, if I did that, that'd been an error. And that's the kind of stuff that you got to watch. Even if you've been doing this for so many years, it's real easy to do that. So, there. 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.5 is 0 0.875Y0. So, there. Somehow I got that confused. It's a good idea to edit your work as you go. A lot better to do it now than it is to do it later because you just see so much you can't do it. All right, so yeah, 0 0.6. Let's double check. 0 0.6, 1.875, 1.375, 0 0.7. So 0 0.7x is going to be one inch to 62 thousandths. So notice I always keep these in order: x, y, z, x. I had a w, x. There we go, and. 1.0625. You could copy and paste directly off here, but trust me, at this point, it's probably not going to save that much time. And what's Y going to be? Y is going to be 2.250, 2.250, or 2 inches, 250 thousandths. Now, I lost my 0 0.7 someplace in there. Uh, I'm going to guess it went over here. It did. So we just delete. There we go. And Control S. So there's point 0.7. Now, we can go back to the part, and I can show you where we're at. Because we don't want you. 1, 2, number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Notice that point 0.7, to get from 6 to 7, we had to do an arc. So guess what? 
that's this GO2, GO1 is not going to work. Let me introduce you to you some other G, G codes right now. GO2 and GO3. GO2 is arc clockwise, GO2, or excuse me, GO2 is arc clockwise, GO3 is arc counterclockwise. So, which direction are we going? Tick tock, tick tock, tick. Well, if you don't know that, because yeah, that's clockwise, so that's a GO2. Put the GO2 there. And we do need to still put in the end spot. Save it's clockwise. I want to put in the end. Always put in the coordinates where it ends. Now we have to put something else in here. We have to put an R value. R. That's that radius. So what is that radius? You know, here we look over here and we see it's 875,000. 0.875. Alright. And I'm going to hit delete one more time and bring back my good buddy number 7. Now, you could put, you can also, something's cool about this, because feed rates are modal, you could put another feed rate here, unless you, maybe you want to slow this down. Looks like it's taking a great big cut. You know, I'll slow it down here or something. You could do that. We're, we're just going to leave it like it is, okay, which is the F7.3, okay. And now we lose, of course, my tab, my uh, referencing there. That's okay. You know it's 0.7. But that's what all you need in there to do an arc. You move to position to where the arc starts. That was 0.6. Then we we program a GO2 and we tell it where the arc ends and what the radius is. Now I'm gonna go back and just say that honestly, you don't have to program that feed rate in there every time. So just to keep my points nice and neat so we can all see them, I'm not going to put the feed rate in there. It's mold. It's going to cut that arc at 7.33 inches per minute. Remember, and once again, how they do that, I give you the number of fruits. That's the number of teeth. Take the number of teeth, type the recommended feed per tooth. You give them a number, multiply that times your RPM. That's your feed. It's that simple. Now, feed per tooth, again, comes from a lot of places. I will supply it later on. I'll give you charts and things like that. Different end mills and different end mill manufacturers and different face cutters are going to have different recommended feed per tooth. And it's going to be based on other things like depth of cut, again, rigidity of setup, all those wonderful variables that we've talked about. Okay, great. So I got N75. Let's see. So this time we're going from point number seven right there to point eight. Okay, great. Let's bring up our coordinate sheet. Mr. Coordinate Sheet, please. There we go, point eight. So. I'll put the point eight in here, knowing that I'm going to have to move it several times. Probably get smarter than that. Now, I got a G00 underway. I don't want to wrap it. I'm going to go back to G01. Remember, these codes are modal. So I want linear interpolation, straight line. Circular interpolation, arc clockwise. Then back to a straight line. If you don't do that, if you put a G02 here, bad things happen. It, will, it won't work. So we put a G01. And we're going to go to point 0.8. So let's see, point 0.8 is 2.9375 in X. So notice I just, I'm not editing, or I'm not redoing it. 2.9375. Double check that. Yes, that is correct. And then Y is going to be 2.250. You're saying, well, it's already there again. We don't have to do that. I'll show you an optimized version of this. I'll optimize it. DV. There we go. Control S. Like I said, get used to doing that. Okay, so let's minimize that. Go back here. Now we're going to do another arc. Look, because we're going to go from what? This was point four, five, six, seven. We went to eight. So now we're going to go to point nine. And point nine is an arc. And again, we're going in a clockwise direction. So point nine, let's go ahead and put our point nine in here so we all know where we're at. All right. And we'll just tap him over. For, uh, really? That was interesting. Okay. <laughs> Control S. So I want to guess what? What do I put here? What does this G01 become? Huh? It becomes a G02. There we go. Z, we don't have no freaking Z moves in here. Remember, where the arc ends is what you program in here. So let's go back and look at our coordinate list. Coordinate. 0.9, 3 .8125 at X. So X is 3.8125, 13 sixteenths, by the way, 3 and 13 sixteenths. Y is going to be, and there's always going to be two 
the coordinate moves in an arc, always. You can't just program it just with one. You always have to put two, no matter if it's a repeat or whatever. You have to do it. So, uh, 1.375. 1 and 3 eighths, people. That's right. Remember, with every GO2, there becomes an R, and the R is, oh, what was it? Let's minimize. I'm pretty sure it's 0.875. Yeah, it's 0.875. We'll bring the coordinates back up here. So, R, R, <laughs> 0 0.875, a pirate's favorite letter, right? I'm going to get rid of the feed again just so we can keep our points here. Let's just delete. There we go. Control S. Okay, so let's go back and see where we're at. Well, we went from there to there. Now we got to go from there to there, which is 9, 10. Okay, so I'm going to program a point 10 here. And G will want G zero zero no way. You see, this is not the same program. This is a different program. So I'm going to G one because we're now it's a straight line. So let's see. Go back to my uh, coordinates, and that is point number ten. So I go to point ten. X is three point eight one two five. Okay, X three point eight one two five. Space Y is going to be it looks like point ten. Y is zero. 0, 0.000. Actually, let's just go point zero zero. Okay, that's point ten. We'll tab that over there. Don't have to put another value. No, we don't. Okay, delete, delete. Put that back in there. Hit tab. No, oh, didn't work. Oh, I see. Tab. There we go. Control S. All right. So we just got through with point number ten. Remember, we're just showing you how to make the machine move around there. All right, so we should be right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, we are almost done with this puppy dog. Yes, that's right. We are almost done with it. So let's put in a reference here. There we go. And we'll just tab that sucker over there. Okay, get it out of the way. Hit Control S. I don't remember if I did that or not. So you can't hit it enough. You can't hit it too many times. Uh, so this again, this time we're going to go over to here. Now, we were right here. We're going to go over here. Now, most people say, wouldn't you lift that up later on? We'll do that. Yeah, but right now we're just, we're just learning how to mill. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go from point 10 to point 11. All right. Now, you know what? Let's no, we'll, we'll no, we'll do it correct. We'll do it correct. So point eleven. First thing we're going to do here is is I'm going to make this a Z move. I'm going to wrap a Z back up. Hundred thousandths above the part. Okay. There is no Y value. That is not point eleven. Copy that out of there. Cut that out of there. Excuse me. And put it right here. Okay. So Z came up, because I was right here and I want to move all the way over here. If I fed over here, or fed, feed, 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 everybody would think you're stupid. Well, why'd you do that? Well, wrap it over here, then feed back down and make your cut. That's what we're going to do. So Z came up, 100,000 is by the part, and now we're going to wrap it to point 11. Well, let me tab that over there. Delete the space. Oh, I should not. Oh, go back. Here we go. All right. So, this can be a G002, or as well, excuse me. That's very confusing. So, this time we're going to be wrapping over to point 11, which is, let's just go ahead and get rid of all this, because this is garbage right here. Uh, let me see, when is point 11? Come up with a coordinate sheet. Point 11 is 1, it's 62,000, so 1 is 0, so point 11. So, here we go. Uh, X is 1.0625. I did not do that right. Not sure what happened there. X 1.0625. Very good. And Y is at 0. I'm going to, again, just to keep everybody straight. Well, with the zeros, I think I'll just take them to two places. There we go. Control S. So I wrap it in there. All right. That is point 11. At this point, I need to feed down. So now I'm going over here to line 100, 
I'm going to turn that to GOM. Remember, we're feeding. And Z is going to come down 500,000, split them apart, minus 0.5 at an F of 7.33. All right. Great. So what we did here, let's recap. We wrapped it up. We wrapped it over into position. We fed back down. So now we're at point 11. We're running. We're ready to take a cut. So let's go back and look at the part. Oh, look at the part. Yeah. So we're sitting right here. So we're going to make a move from there to there, from 11 to 12. It's a straight line move. So we can go back here. Not this one. But this one right here should be 12. Okay. And tab that puppy dog over. I always put a space in front of that. Delete. That's something I don't like about Notepad. It's hard sometimes to tell if you got a space. Looks like I got a space there. What is that? I don't know what that was. Okay, very good. Control S. They haven't done that in a while. All right. So let's see. We got a rapid move to point twelve. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go because we're going from there to there. So this is definitely going to be a G01. This G01 is already modal, but again, just so we're hitting Control S, by the way. And let's see what our coordinates are here for point number 12. Point 12, one is 62,000. So point 12 over here, X is going to be. Oh, no, excuse me. That's point 12 right there. X is going to be. 1.0625 or 1 inch at 62 thousandths and 5 tenths. And y is not going to be 0. I believe y was 750. Let's go ahead and look. Yes, 750. So 0 0.750. All right. Now, I'm going to hit the wrong line. So undo that. All right. It's this one that I wanted to change to 0.75. You'll make all these same mistakes too. <laughs> It's easy to do it. All right, good time to hit Control S if you haven't. All right, so let's go back to our part here. So we just moved from there to there. Now we're going to do another arc. And which direction is it going? Come on, you can tell me. I'll wait. I heard that. Okay, clockwise. Very good. Yes, that's clockwise. So guess what? We're going to have a geo two here. We're going to geo two from point twelve to point thirteen. So let's go down here. I'm going to put. Parentheses, 13. This time I'm going to be really careful about my insertion point. Tab over. That worked great. Control S. So we're going to be a GO2 here. I'm going to keep track of that. GO2. And we're going to go to where the coordinates of GO2 at the end coordinates. So I've got my coordinate sheet. And that was point 13. See, this way you write it down here and you go over here and you see it. 2.9375 GO2. So that's X. Make sure I'm on the right line. X 2.9375, which is 2 inches and 15 sixteenths. And remember, always have to have a Y value, space Y, uh, 750. Even if you're already at 750, you still have to put that in there, all right? Every GO2 requires two coordinates, X and Y. Okay, so what do I have? 0 0.750, 750 thousandths. And, of course, the R. Now, our R is, excuse me, capital R. R is going to be different this time. Let's take a look at the print. What is R? R this time is 0.9375 because that's that radius I just cut. So, can't, don't put 875 there. You'll get the wrong radius. I will, again, just for clarity's sake, get rid of this. You don't need it anyway. You can change the feed. Remember, feed's modal. Let's see. Right here. That's a lot. And I haven't got if once I go to G00, it will cancel out the feed. So but it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's all good. So we're all good. We have our feed. Uh, uh, if I had more room, yeah, I could put that feed on there, but you really don't need it. Like I said, it's mobile. Trust me, it'll work just fine. All right, let's go back to, this is point 13. I'm going to delete some things here. There's 13. Control S if you haven't done it. So I got I, I geotude to point 13, which was right there. 
And X2.375, Y.75, R9.375. I'm going to double check my coordinates. 0 0.13, 2.375, X.75. See, this is why you do this first. Yeah. Calculate your RPMs up first. Calculate your speeds up first. Or your feeds up first. Let's try that again. Calculate your RPMs. Calculate your feed. Calculate up all your points. Number them, put them in a chart. This is how you learn. All right, so let's go back to the part. Let's see where we're at. Now we're right there at point 13. We might go to point 14 and say we're going to finish this sucker up. That is going to be a straight line move. So let's go here. Probably already ahead of me by now. I have to talk and do it. I don't know why that didn't do that. Oh, I know why. Hit hard. There we go. And I'm going to put my insertion point right there. Tab it over. And put another one in front of it because I can't seem to do anything right this one. Okay. So this is going to be a geo one. That's right. We're making a straight line. And where are we moving to? Well, I know we're just moving down. I didn't have to look at the coordinate sheet. I'm moving from there to there. I'm going to Y0. So I can put X 2.9375. That's fine. It won't hurt. Y0. By the way, make sure you understand this. If you type that, the machine will not recognize it. Every number has to have a decimal point. So while it doesn't have that have to have that zero there, it most certainly has to have that decimal point. I'm going to put the zero there. All right. The feed again is already modal, so I'm not going to put it in there. Well, we can as well. We got room this time. And I put a baby F in there because ah, I'm so used to keep doing that. And we'll delete here and bring our number back. Control S. All right, so we milled from there to there. Haha. <laughs> now this is almost done. This part is almost done. Is it a real part? No, it is not. All right. Now I made a mistake, and I want you to check this out later on. I how deep did I go here? Hmm. This is a pocket. This is an island. We call this an island because we removed this stock here. We're removing all the stock inside of here. So this is a pocket. So you can see it's a pocket. Oh, it's only 250,000 steep. Oh, uh, Randall, did you go 500,000 steep? Yeah, you ruined that part. No, I didn't because I caught it. So I'm going to go back up to my depth and change that to 250. Hit Control S. That's right. Now I'm okay. Now, again, this is not going to cut a realistic part. You know, it's not. But... We're getting the idea of it all the time, more and more all the time. Okay, so we've done that. Let's see. I don't really need this. I'm going to minimize this one more time. And I really don't need this anymore. I can actually make this great big. There we go. What we're going to do now is finish this up. How do we end the program? Well, there's a couple good ways to do it. Uh, you don't really have to turn anything off. You know, what? Well, that's what this does. So let's go ahead. That was point. Uh, it's point fourteen. Yeah, G one X was yeah. Y went to zero. Uh, excuse me, that was wrong. Three and delete. Control S. There we go. At seven point three three inches per minute. All right. So guess what? All this other stuff right here. I really don't need. But see, that's another thing about notebook. But it, it, when you highlight stuff. If you don't know how to do that, I am clicking with my left finger and then dragging it across to select the text, then letting go. And I'm just going, I don't want you. Delete. All right. Do I want this? I don't know. I might. Z? No. no, no. I'm just going to program it. G, zero, zero. I want to wrap it. Z is going to come up to, oh, I don't know. We can make it. Hundred thousands. That's cool. Wrap it up to a hundred thousand above the park. That's not where we're going to keep it. I don't have to give it anything else. All right. The next move is let's get rid of all this. We'll just delete it. Delete. And hit Control S. Next move is what? Well, the next move is simply this. I don't think I can move this. Can I move it? No, I cannot. If I minimize it a bit, it's so funny how that works. Grab it by this bar. And move it a little more. I did not want to maximize it. Minimize it. Minimize. Come on. There. Amp. Screw it. 
too much time to do that. All right, so we're 100,000 above the part. So what else do we need to do at this point? Well, this is where I'm going to get rid of this line. I'm going to get rid of this line. Okay. Now, something I haven't put up here, and I'm going to put up here. This is the first time we've seen this at M09. Maybe it isn't. Let's cool it off. That's a good time to turn your coolant off. Again, especially if you don't have a totally closed machine, because if the coolant comes up, you know, you're not cutting anything. We're not going to cut anything anymore. Turn the coolant off. Just turn it off. Control S. Now, I'm going to copy this because this is a really cool move right here. Cut. I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to copy it right there. See how I do that? It's always better to cut and paste whenever you can. Control S if you haven't done that. Okay. We've got all our points that we milled to. <clears throat> now, what this does, the G28 sends it, the machine to home. All right. And that recalibrates the machine, puts it in its tool change position in a lot of cases. Not always, but most of the time. Anyway, there's a lot of good reasons to do that. Always use the G28. Now, I put the Z move in. You could put a Z move and a Y move and X move. But what that does is it will actuate this move first at a rapid. So it's going to rapid four inches above the part. Then all three axes are going to go home as fast as they can go. So it'll go up like this. Zoop, and then go zoop like that. And at some machines running at 2,000 inches per minute, that's like this. <laughs> Seriously. There's no way you can stop. A word of safety, never get your hand any place close to a CNC machine when it's moving. It has no idea if you're there or not. Our new Haas mill is so anal about that that the door, it will not run unless the doors are locked. That's right. If the doors aren't locked, closed and locked, it won't run. There's no way you can get your hand in there unless you take the glass out of the doors, which would be stupid. So we've got that. Now, I've got some extra sequence numbers here I do not need. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and what do you think I'm going to do? Cut. Paste. Some people say, oh, God, it's just easier to type. It yeah, may be. Let's get rid of those. One more. Get rid of that. Control S. Okay, so let's go over that again. What The G28 sends the machine home but with a Z 4.0. Z is going to go to four inches above the part first. The N30 does a lot of things. One, it says, Program's over. Two, it says reset it to the top and get ready to run again. Three, it'll turn the coolant on. It'll turn turn the coolant off. Sorry. It'll turn the spindle off. It'll do all that stuff. It's all in that little nice little M30 code. There is no such thing as a program without an M30. The last and certainly not least is that. Look, folks, if you don't put this in here, and you don't put this in here, the control will not say, recognize it as an NC or a CNC program, and it'll go, uh, it'll say something like, IMP not found, or, God, it generates all kinds of weirdo stuff that doesn't make any sense. Most error codes on CNC machines are written by people in uh, other countries that don't know anything about machining, and they just use whatever they think they can put in there. Sometimes he might even come up in Chinese or Pakistanian or something like that. So don't trust your error codes. Do it like that. Now I'm not going to go over this whole thing all again, okay? Because it would just take you don't want me to do it anyway. But that's what you need to program. This is what I'm looking for. Your name here. That's not your name. That's my name. Ooh, okay. Remember that. Now I don't have to cancel anything. We didn't turn on any G80s. Later on, we use can cycles. We turn them on, we turn them off, just like a light switch. We'll show you how to do that. I think that's enough. It's 12.23 here, and I'm getting hungry. So I'm going to post this. Uh, the due date is in the lab itself. Uh, I'll also probably put up a feed calculation quiz pretty soon. Module 2, look for that. Uh, Look at that. you got to watch the videos, people. Uh, later on, we will have some Zoom meetings, and maybe later on, if we can get the COVID thing under control, uh, we might even have a face-to-face -face meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. And for everybody else that's out there in the other world, you know, cool. Glad you're watching these. Hope you learned something. Because, by the way, I post these so that everybody can see them. I don't care. My channel's not monetized. I'm making no money. <sighs> All right. Have a good day.